Hey everybody, it is what? Um, Monday, August 21st, and it's time for a sketchbook review. Fair warning guys, this is your opportunity. Go get something to eat, go get something to drink, go to the bathroom, because this is gonna be a long video. Um, I didn't think I had too much to really show, but after looking through a few things, I realized I kind of did. Um, so I hope I'm not boring you guys too much, but I've had multiple, multiple, multiple requests for a sketchbook review to get done. And um, I just figured whatever, I'll go ahead and do one. Um, just kind of a video to get back in touch with you guys to see where you um, are, or for you guys to see kind of where I am and my process and what's going on in my head. Um, but as a creator, I just want you guys to understand that my mind is going all the time and that's part of my problem is i've got like six different directions i want to go in and i can't commit to just one because they're all really good ideas as far as i'm concerned so i'm sort of struggling in that regard but i think i've got the direction i want to go in um and i think what i'm going to do is take a step back and rather than focus on an entire like graphic novel or series just maybe start doing little stories here and there just like little mini comics to sort of you know basically it'd be like the chapters um but com compiled into one big thing so that's what i'm thinking about doing because I can't seem to get anything done because I, I feel like a graphic novel is so huge and overwhelming that it makes me not want to work anymore. Anyway, so I got color work, I've got inked work, and I've got sketch work. So I'm going to show you guys all of it. Now my color work, I've done a bit more than I'm going to show you guys, but it's because I don't want to go digging for everything right now. So um, part of this sketchbook review is something you guys are going to see is I did develop a couple new characters. So we have Andrew, who is not really a new character. He um, was just being developed in my last sketchbook review. But um, he's sort of gotten an attitude, uh, composition, color picking, and all that good fun stuff was done. So he's pretty much ready to go. So I did this of the trio because they're all going to be buddies. Um, then we have Alexander and then we have Anne's. Um, so these three, they get along pretty well. They're pretty good friends, yada, yada, yada. I just wanted to start doing more color stuff because I feel like I'm, I'm sorely lacking in color. I focus too much on sketching sometimes, if not all the time. So I wanted to do some color work, so I did. Um, this is a fan art that I did for Lex Gallinger of her character Vlad. Uh, this was a speed paint. You guys can go see it's um, color erase, color pencil, and watercolors. This was a character profile picture kind of thingy of Anne's when I first made him. Uh, this is a picture of Andrew forcing a kiss on Piper. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, he's not gentle with her and he's not nice with her. Um, it actually surprises me that people want to see them end up together considering how emotionally and eventually physically abusive he is with her. Um, spoiler alert, he's not a good guy. I mean, granted, there are reasons as to why he behaves the way he does. I don't believe that people are just innately abusive. Um, it's usually a cause or an effect of the environment. but. You know, we do run into those types of people in our lives and it's either up to the individual to help them change or for the individual themselves who's causing the abuse to change. Um, and all of that's going to be addressed later on in the story. I just haven't quite figured out how I want to be. I just know that I want him to not be a good guy. But yeah, he's very rough with Piper. He's not very nice to Piper. And amazingly enough, you know, he's still a good guy, I, and that's part of what I want to show is like he's actually a really good friend, um, and he's actually every now and then does do very thoughtful things even for her, but he himself is not a good guy because he's got a lot of anger. He's got issues, people. I mean, we've all got issues. It's just, yeah. Point being, point being, uh, he's not a good guy, but someone kept asking me for Piper and Andrew artwork, so I'm like, fine, whatever, I'll do one. So I did one. And I kind of wanted to just play with um, the uh, sepia, not sepia, but the earth brown ink that I got. So I was looking to do a piece anyway, so I just kind of did this one. This is a quick picture of Piper and um, 
Samuel. Now Samuel is lacking his glasses in this picture and I have changed him from a gray bat to a brown bat because that brown bat species is more indigenous to actually actually to where the story is supposed to be taking place anyway and it makes more sense um, uh, environmental wise because brown bats uh, cave in the winter and they uh, will hang out in trees and like houses and barns and stuff in the spring and summer so um, it actually adds to the story quite a bit so I've changed him to a brown bat I just have to redesign him and recolor him um, Adam is already a brown bat so I'm set there I just need to get get on board here with Samuel yes um, and this was a quick watercolor piece I did again um, you guys seen the post or whatever it was based on the venomous cupcake collaboration um, I seen that they were using flowers and I saw that Miss Venomous Cupcake herself was actually using straight up flowers and I kind of wanted to do something similar because I thought it looked cute. So I just kind of did this for funsies. Um, it's supposed to be a lady in waiting piece and I also wanted to use my metallic acrylics and I wanted to use my turquoise ink which I've pretty much decided that as awesome as it is um, for like eyelashes and things like that I probably should go a little bit darker so I will be doing that in the future not necessarily darker but I could always go over them with like a brown color pencil or the color of the hair or whatever just to darken them in but yeah so that's some of the color work I've been doing there's more I just like I said I don't feel like digging it out right now and you guys are more interested in my sketchbooks anyway so we left off last time with this picture of Piper. Now all of these you guys have seen if you've been watching my Terry Talks, but some of them are not Terry Talks. Some of them were just things I did on a lark. So you guys saw this one where I was kind of explaining Piper. This was just a quick doodle to show that I could do other art besides fairy art. This is me, a self-portrait in Little Witch Academy uh, style. And I think it's really cute and I liked it. So I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, then. Uh, me and uh, Sakura were talking about um, the babies again because she's got her twin boys and then I've got Lydia and Lydia is eventually going to be born and uh, I decided to do some artwork of her because we were talking about her so I've got a cute little Lydia sketch here where she's sitting in some like cherry blossom things or apple blossom probably considering where she lives from um, then there's a picture of one of the twins, Mac and Honor. I can't remember which one it is. I'm sorry, Sakura, but um, there's two of them, and they both uh, have a little crush on Lydia. Lydia, just to be fair, is a very, very, very sweet girl, and like everybody probably wants to Mac on her. Uh, this was just a quick portrait of Samuel. I was trying to get his characterization done. This was way before I did the colorization um, picture that you guys saw earlier. Uh, and I've pretty much decided that they do wear the vestments because they have wings and I've also decided that the wings and this came later too Are going to be attached and they're going to drag like capes and I, I just I like that it gives them like this very royal sort of mystique to them and I I just adore it plus capes, you know, just think of all those awesome vampiric hugs and just ugh, I love it I love the idea wings are awesome guys anyway um, and I still have him toned out to be gray here, but again, I've changed my mind. I'm going to make him brown. I just have to get around to doing it. This is Piper and Bartholomew. She's hugging on him because he's so sweet and he's so fluffy and she loves him. It's her friend. Uh, I kind of got a little bit, um, nostalgic and I wanted to draw Jean. So I drew a picture of Andrew and Jean kind of doing that anime thing where they glare back and forth and there's like... A um, little bit of sparks of tension. Did a quick picture of Cherry as a gun gal just because I don't know I like the idea of Cherry as a gun gal. Um, I was messing around with these really vibrant highlighters I bought from the dollar store and they're kind of crummy they tear up the paper but um, whatever I did a picture of Piper with these really bright highlighters and then I did another picture of Piper with some really cheap colored pencils just to kind of color something. I don't know. I was in a funk this night. And when I get into a mood like where I don't feel like anything I do is good, um, I tend to draw Piper more often because she's my calming character. She's She was what I used in, in college. And I, I've mentioned this before. She's the character I used in college as a comfort measure. She's what I went to when I was stressed and I didn't know what to do with myself and I wanted to quit everything and I 
didn't have the energy to keep going and I just wanted to lay in bed and cry. She was my go-to character. And part of that again is that she embodies a lot of the strength and a lot of the qualities I wish I had in myself. So of course naturally I gravitate towards her a little bit more than say Cherry who would just smash things or any of my other characters who would handle situations much differently. Um, like I said, she is a source of calm for me. She's a source of familiarity to me. So when I'm in a bad mood or when I'm sad, she's who I gravitate towards. So don't be jelly. Don't be hating. Piper's just my gal. That's all there is to it. Um, Scarlet, I can show this because she's covered in feathers. Uh, she's like a total cam hoe and, uh, she's also a porn star. So yeah, you guys should know that by now. So I figured that she's like a selfie queen. And that's probably how she like that's this is how she would maintain her Instagram which is just instant like nudie selfies it's great um, I worked in a concept for Andrew I wanted him to have like nice formal wear things like that um, very happy with it but then I remembered he shouldn't have sleeves <laughs> because he's got wings attached to the back of his um, to the back of his arm so sleeves are a little bit ridiculous for a bat but whatever but yeah, I just really wanted to draw um, Adam. Did I say Andrew? I meant Adam. So this is Adam, guys. Don't get confused. This is Adam and Thea. I decided that Adam needs to have a nice little pet. And um, one of the things that's treasured among the bat community is to have lighter colored mice. Because um, they're pretty, you know, and... and they're just albinos are rare. Not like in mice. They're actually pretty common in mice. But... Um, for the time and the setting in this in the society that I've got them set in albino mice in particular with the red eyes the the red nose and the well she has red lips um they're pretty rare now she's not blind though like a lot of albinos tend to be blind about albino mice but um she's not so he's got her as a pet and he likes to toy with her she likes to toy with him to be honest with you so they kind of go back and forth it's kind of a fun sort of devious relationship but she's actually quite needy she's actually quite clingy to him she really does love him and he just uses the crap out of her because that's what she's there for and whatever um this was me settling on her design a little bit more i want to make her a thicker girl though um so i've got her busty but i don't have her as thick as i want her to be i think i gave her a little bit too much of a waist in this one but okay so guys, some of the stuff in here I cannot show you because it's nudity, it's considered pornographic, yada yada yada, and I'm just not going to deal with that bull crap. Um, so in here I've got some fan art, this is Lex Gallinger's character, um, Lex, and uh, Cherry. I just imagine that they're meeting, like, because it's a military setting for Lex's stuff, it's World War II. I just always imagine that, like, if Lex was at a bar, Cherry would be the first one there to be hitting on her just because, you know, whatever. It's not often you see women especially that time period to be in positions of military status and like just happens to be and Cherry's like wow wowza but yeah so let's go ahead and turn the page without turning the page you guys probably have seen this one too so you're not missing out on anything um and this here is a picture of another one of Lex's characters Vlad I talked about him a little bit earlier Vlad is very much like his brother Sven and um, from what I've gathered he's a pretty big womanizer he's a huge flirt and uh, Piper like again I ship people and I shouldn't ship my characters with other people's characters but Vlad is actually one of the ones I do ship Piper with because I don't know I feel like they get along but I feel like it'd be one of those tragic love stories um, point being is that like I just imagine her constantly um, nursing him because he gets hurt a lot and I don't know it's just whatever that's my ship leave it alone don't judge me <laughs> so I drew them together um, she doesn't seem to mind and the second she tells me she minds I will stop but she doesn't seem to mind so far so you know I think that they're kind of cute together but whatever um, Piper and Bartholomew he is invasive sometimes just kind of like pay attention to me mama and she's just like I'm busy I got floors to clean but she still loves him it's just you know he can be a butthead sometimes because you know that he's a pet um this right here is a picture I can't remember his name um 
but oh well. I can't remember his name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I should write it on the paper, but I don't. But Cherry and someone else's OC. Um, I purposely made it suggestive, guys. Like some people were like, oh my god, you're so dirty. It's like, no, he's a pianist. Maybe she just wants him to play a lullaby. I mean, yeah, I get the double meaning. I totally get it. That's kind of why I did it. But I like how a lot of people go immediately to the accusing of me just being filthy. I'm like, you're the one who came up with it. Now he is a pianist, so you're the one with the filthy mind. Um, this is just a quick little doodle of Piper and Samuel. Uh, this is going to be a picture of Piper reading a letter, but I, for I just didn't. Um, Ada, for those of you guys who don't um, know, she is one of my characters. She's she's the twin sister of Alexander. They're not identical twins because they're different sexes, but they look very, very similar. Um, and I did that on purpose. But this is Ada. She's pretty messed up. And this is Alexander. He's not as messed up. He's actually a pretty cool guy. Uh, this is Alexander and Piper. Now a lot of people like immediately like starts thinking that I'm trying to ship Alexander and Piper. And I'm really not. It's just he's very nice and very flirtatious with all the girls. That includes Cherry. That includes, uh, I almost said Ada, but that's not it. <laughs> that includes Thea. That includes all the other girls. He just is a very genuinely nice person. And Piper responds to guys talking to her always the same way. There's always a blush. So just because she's blushing when she's talking to someone doesn't mean she's interested in them. It's just that she's a very shy character when it comes especially to males. And there, again, is a reason for it. So yes, 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 yes. But no, I did like this picture of them. It's fun. This right here is suggestive, but it's clean. Ada has twin twin ideas that her and Alexander are supposed to be together because they're twins so she's a little bit psychologically messed up in that regard that she has a bit too much fondness for her brother but he does keep her in check and reminds her that that's not gonna happen and that's not how we roll she pushes it but she does back off at the same time so I don't know she's one of those people who's like there's a separation there's a separation via um Alexander because obviously he understands that morally speaking it's wrong and he's not interested in his sister because to him it's like well ill but she on the other hand because they don't have a family and because they've been orphans for so long she looks to him that that's the only person the only man who ever is an ideal for her and it's because he's taken such good care of her and has cared for her that she's sort of misunderstood that relationship and at the same time she's a twin and twins tend to actually be a lot closer psychologically than normal siblings and when you don't have anyone there really to tell you any better which she never did other than her brother who she just figures isn't interested you start to think that well there's nothing wrong with this this is a natural thing so it's not like they're actually engaging in twin cest and i know that some people are like it may good but it's just that she has her issues which eventually she will overcome so don't worry but in the beginning of the story it's very much a prominent issue between the siblings and it's one that they have to address um Ada, because of the fact that she's very much a loner, she doesn't like other people. She especially does not like other females, except Thea. She does get along with Thea. Um, she does spend a lot of her time alone, so she is actually put to work in the gardens. Um, there's, there's a few things that the bats have the mice do, because they're small. And this is true of nature too. Mice do pollinate. Now they don't intentionally pollinate, but they do pollinate because they can carry pollen on their fur when they're going, you know, scavenging around. But what the what um, Ada does is she will do purposeful pollination, so that way the bats can have good crops when it comes to flowers and things like that. And in turn, it also helps to increase the bee population and increase the honey production, yada yada yada. So hers is actually a very important role, even though nobody really acknowledges it. Um, all of that leads to uh, actually a very good successful uh, business proposition coming up in the story at some point. I don't know when exactly, but it's coming. And um, 
So her job is actually very, very, very important. And it also gives her the seclusion that she needs to feel comfortable because, you know, while she doesn't get along with women and things like that, she knows she has to work with them, but she doesn't get along with very many men either. She just prefers to stay away from them because, you know, in her mind, there's only one ultimate super stud and that's her brother. And, um, again, she gets along with Thea pretty well. They're pretty, like, just chill and that's part of the reason um can't really show this picture either because of youtube so sorry about that guys this is was a request i believe i was stumped one night on what to draw so i asked what to draw and people said oh drunk piper so i was like eh whatever drew drunk piper she's cute her and samuel do go flying um it is something that he encourages her to do because it's fun for him um, this was just a quick doodle of Andrew smoking and, you know, doing what Andrew do. This was a picture of Cherry on a swing because Cherry on a swing was a really, really cute idea. And it's still a really, really cute picture. Ada in her undergarments just because, I don't know, she's cute and adorable. She is actually quite a fun and dynamic and well plotted out character. Um, I purposely gave her the red lips. I want her to have sort of the seduct seductress look to her and with the long black hair and the red lips and the red eyes, it just it just hammers it home. It's wonderful. Um, and Andrew, or not Andrew, but um, Alexander has the same features too. Um, his aren't as bold or I have not made them as bold as Ada's, but um, yeah, you get it. You get the point. All right, sorry, my battery died. Uh, so yes, Adele in her undergarments because she's cute and adorable. Um, this is a picture of Alexander and uh, Andrew. They get into fights every now and then. And Alexander isn't really much of a fighter, but he understands that sometimes you kind of got to throw a punch to get along. And Andrew's just a brawler and that's how he does. And the more he drinks, the more he wants to brawl. And that's just the way he is. This was some fan art that I did for... I think it's, her name is pronounced JL. Yeah, I think it's JL Anderson. Um, yeah, I'm kind of like, I want to be proud of it, but I'm not because like, I can see that I was not very good on anatomy, but whatever. <laughs> um, another Thea and Adele and um, Ada picture. Um, like I said, they actually get along very, very well. Like. Thea actually te she teaches, blah, blah, treats her like a younger sister and um, Ada really, really needs that, that female contact. She needs to know that, you know, it's okay to make friends with girls. Um, and that's hard for her. It's very, very hard for her because keep in mind that the, as orphans, she was raised by females who were not necessarily the kindest and she was living with females who were not necessarily the kindest. Um, a lot of abuses in um, the systems for orphans depending on the system you go into because Piper went into a different system than Ada, than Ada did um, I, and I think that I'm not going to get that detailed into the story but Ada went to one kind of orphanage and Piper and her sister went to another so there were differences in how they were raised Ada was not raised very well and literally her only friend was her brother again it just strengthens that whole twin um, that whole twin bond that they've got and things like that. So, um, like I said, Samuel does take Piper flying. Now, Piper initially is quite terrified of flying. Later on, she really, really enjoys it. So I did a little, I like to do a little bit of dialogue on all of my pieces just for fun. Uh, this is Adam meeting Piper for the first time. To Adam, all mice are property and need to be inspected and judged. Um, and Samuel kind of plays along with it because it is a very common um, belief among the aristocracy of the of the bat population. Bats are um, very much higher than mice. Mice are subservient classes. They're literally the servant class that should never be seen. Um, but for the most part, he just basically 
is a jerk and I mean that's nothing new you guys you guys have known that Adam's a jerk from like day one and Samuel he plays along with it he doesn't mean the things that he says and he makes it very clear to Piper in their downtime that you mean more to me than just a piece of property but I can't let on that you mean more to me than just a piece of property because if I did then people would want that piece of property he just kind of treats her like an accessory and that's how they're supposed to be treated that's very very common um, Thea being quite cute and adorable with Adam and Adam's just like get off my <sighs> they are kind of cute together though, I'll admit to that he tolerates a lot from her too like if he had to like choose Thea is his like number one because he keeps a lot of mice he also keeps a lot of female bats because I was reading about how bats keep harems and things like that um, and Adam strikes me as the kind who would keep both around just for his amusement. Uh, and, and he probably does, you know, stop and think about it. And again, I don't even know that that's going to become integral to the story. It's just kind of how the character is. But he, he, he likes to collect um, pretty mice and that's just his whole thing. Um, this was a character I developed based off of someone else's character in the Duckverse. Um, uh, Disney Psycho, I guess, is her handle. Uh, she has a character named Jacob, and I was just like, oh, well, if Jacob was a mouse, this is what he would look like. So I brought him in, and I figured that he would be a teacher, he'd be an instructor, something along those lines um, to teach the girls and the young men how to properly act, and that he'd actually be higher society because he's albino, but he doesn't have the red features. He has a black nose and darker eyes. So he's not actually like the creme de la creme. Like Thea is like the ultimate, like everybody would want her as a pet because she's perfect. She's albino, she's got red eyes, she's got red lips, she's got the red nose, and she can see. Jacob is a white mouse, but he's not necessarily albino. So, but he's still very, very popular. He's very charming, very sophisticated, very educated, and he's in a very prosperous position for his station. So, yeah. Um, I just wanted to draw a picture of Piper pregnant. And then, of course, the second I draw, everyone's like, who's the dad? And I'm like, well, if you guys have known me long enough, you could tell by the hint I left who the dad is. <laughs> but if not, then, you know, oh wells. Uh, Andrew and Jacob um, do not get along, like, at all. Not that I think that they would actually have guns. And don't judge me based on the fact I can't draw guns, guys. Um, but he doesn't take... Andrew's crap and Andrew isn't going to take Jacob's crap but Jacob is older and much more experienced and you know I see him down talking Andrew a lot like every single chance he gets and I can see Andrew as being like this obstinate child in return so I don't know I kind of like the dynamic but at the same time I'm like eh, that it seems like one of those cliche dynamics but whatever whatever I just don't like the idea of Andrew hating everybody, but he doesn't hate everybody. He actually likes quite a few people. Um, I had this cute idea of Piper's first social event. Um, Jacob kind of hovers near her to sort of help her out and keep her calm because she's very, very shy, very, very nervous initially. She gets a little bit better as time goes on, but she clearly has her favorites. But once she figures out how to schmooze properly, she's quite the party darling like she socializes very very well but that actually ends up being working against her eventually but yeah uh just a quick doodle of alexander i need to figure out his hair for sure because i kind of go back and forth on it from the looks of it uh i did a quick doodle of scarlet because i kind of missed um drawing her and then i have like her expense report like all figured out right here yeah I'm a nerd. I like tiny little details like that. Um, this right here is a, uh, sorry, I had an itch. This is a doodle of, um, Belfry from, uh, Tamberlane and it's a fan art. So for Pixel Pr Prism, guys, it's a good comic. Go read it. Uh, this was another picture of Piper and Jacob. Now I can see them getting along because I see him taking her under her wing. He really wants her to succeed because her success is his success. It just looks better on him. And she's charming and you know, charming girl. And sometimes you know, she's polite and she's nice and she's kind and she's genuine. So like people actually want to help her. So it's really, really cute. Um, 
I don't know I wanted to draw Cherry in a big ridiculous fancy hat so I did I don't know why I drew a quick picture of um, Ada and um, this would be Alexander off to the side saying that Thea wants her to go to tea and uh, he encourages her into that friendship like very very he like shoves her into that friendship because she needs other friends besides him so even though she's a bit apprehensive initially she does eventually sort of go into that friendship this was a uh, cute little doodle of the wind taking poor little Piper away and blowing her around and Andrew's just like oh my god don't hit me I have a mushroom I know that she's like much smaller than he is he should actually be just a hair quite a bit smaller actually now that I'm looking at it but I thought it was a cute idea so I did it I did it no regrets no regrets I can't remember what her name was supposed to be but she had a name and I forgot it I don't even know if she's gonna make an appearance anymore but whatever um, this was supposed to be a stoat character I wanted to bring in because stoats hunt mice and I just I had this really really cute idea and uh, it went away though it went away it went away uh, this was a quick scribble I did when I was uh, up north I didn't have all my stuff with me and I have found these tiny little pens and I just kind of want to see how they would work and I realized I grabbed the wrong brush pen so whatever so this just kind of became a practice sheet but the whole idea was I wanted to do a mini comic about uh, Jacob teaching Piper about the different utensils at a table because you know formal dinners there's a lot and a lot and a lot of utensils that just don't make sense so <laughs> this was her reaction to all the spoons Ada and um the idea was that she has like a little honeybee friend because she works and she pollinates and she does all of that stuff whereas Piper was just working cleaning up in the house and stuff like that and stumbled upon a moth who was hiding because it didn't want to get slaughtered Ada is like actually out there and she's like working with the honeybees and stuff so and I kind of like have this bee queen bee complex with her only she's like a reverse queen bee and that she wants to be the queen auntie bee or something like that like she doesn't want the title at all this was just some um, doodling real quick for a character um, for a Patreon reward. This is Anne's. Anne's is a freaking cowboy. Respect. Um, his story basically, and I'm going to just go ahead and tell you guys, is he came from out west to the east because there was more money out east. And out west, he was wrangling scorpions and doing things like that because he is a grasshopper mouse. And then grasshopper mice do eat scorpions. They jump on them, they take off their stinger, and then they eat the actual insect bit. Um, but he wrangles the scorpions. It's part of their food production out there. And that is why he has, he's has he got a scar here. He's got a couple more on him. But um, he's also very calm and just chill. And he's trying to take care of his mama. And so he goes back out west where the jobs aren't as dangerous and where he can earn more money and send back to her sort of thing and that's what he does plus plus grasshopper mice howl at the moon guys it's pretty awesome um this is a little interaction between ants and cherry this is what it started off as and then i added to it by doing a follow-up with uh, alexander and andrew and they're just kind of giving him a hard time because i imagine that they were all three talking and then cherry just kind of swung in and went straight for ants she's grabbing his beard by the way i like that does he have a beard yeah he has a beard on this one too um and just kind of reaches in grabs him by his little goat hairs there and you know makes her proposition and then uh, there's Andrew over here going, ooh, Anne's, you sexy cowboy. Ow! And I think I got that. Where did I get that from? I was watching something and they were making, oh, it was Roseanne. I think it was Darlene said something like, you sexy thing. And I just was like, yeah, that sounds about right for him too. So went ahead and tossed that in there. Just because that's how guys are. Like they give each other crap all the time. At least these three do. Um, this was another Vlad and Piper doodle I did. This time he's coming to her with a flower instead of just injuries. It's cute. And this is Jacob teaching Piper how to dance. Now I'm trying to push my um, my poses and my compositions uh, more and more every time. So dancing compositions are actually quite hard because they're very dynamic poses that don't always make sense. And they're hard to translate for me visually. So I'm forcing myself to do more of it and I don't know. 
I'm trying, I, I'd like to think I'm succeeding, but I, I don't want to be like, I'm the best when I know that there's clearly room for improvement, so. And then that's it. There's not much left to the sketchbook, so. All right, um, now this video has actually gone on for like half an hour, so I think I'm gonna do this in two parts. The first part will be the color and then the inking sketchbook, and then the second will be this um, the sketching sketchbook, just so that way you guys can sort of take a break and it gives me a chance to edit, put things in, upload it, and it's not like an hour long video. So I'll see you guys in part two of the sketchbook review.